الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد. So continuing on in the lesson, we were reading from the book uh, Asulul Thalatha, which means the three foundations. And the last time we were talking about something very important, we talked about that the author of the book said that there are four things that every Muslim should know. The four things that every Muslim should know. He said the first thing is that the Muslim should uh, should know should have knowledge. Remember we said we have to have knowledge. If you want to pray, you have to have knowledge. You have to know how to pray. And he described, he defined knowledge. He gave, he told us what knowledge means. He said that knowledge, it means ma'rafatullah. Uh, it means to know Allah. This is the real knowledge. You could be a doctor, you could be a lawyer, you could be an engineer, that's okay. But the real knowledge, the best knowledge is knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is knowing who your Lord is and how to worship Him. And when we know Allah, we have to know Allah by His names and His attributes. Allah is Al-Khaliq, meaning He's the Creator. He is, uh, you know, the Rabb. He is our Rabb. He is the Lord of everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Lord of everything. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al Ghafur Rahim. He is the most forgiving and the most merciful. These are some of the names and attributes or characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah is all of those things. Those are all His characteristics or some of His characteristics that He possesses. And that's why we worship Him. We worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because no one else has those divine names and characteristics. No one else has mercy like Allah's mercy. No one else can forgive and be is the most forgiving like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. No one can create. We can make things, we can build buildings, we can build houses only with the permission of Allah. Allah is the one who created it, created everything, and He gave us the ability to do things. Allah gave you the ability to speak. He gave you the ability to think. He gave you the ability to write. He gave you the ability the ability to do any all the things that you know how to do. When you read a book, even if you finish the book, you finished it only because Allah let you. Allah created you, and to Him you will return. Meaning that all of us are going to die. Every person will die. And they'll go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then they will be judged for what they did. So again, going back, the first thing that we have to know is knowledge. We have to have knowledge on how to worship Allah. We have to have knowledge of who Allah is. And then this, and knowledge is also that we know who the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is. That we know that it's Muhammad ibn Abdullah. That is who we follow. We follow his example. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, Allah said in the Quran in many places, He said, follow Allah, you know, obey Allah, and obey His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we are ordered to follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's what we have to do when we want to worship Allah. We have to follow Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to follow his example. Alayhi salatu wa salam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, uh, Wa alaykum bi sunnati. He said, It's upon you my sunnah. Meaning that we, as his ummah, his community, we have to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The way he prayed, we have to pray. The way he fasted, we have to fast. The way he believed, we have to believe. We have to have the same belief. If Allah says that He is above His throne, Ar-Rahman al istawa If Allah says about Himself that He rose above His throne, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi uh, described for us that Allah subhanahu wa taala also uh, descends to the lowest heaven, then we believe that. We don't ask how. But we believe it because we're following the Prophet ﷺ. We're following how he believed. And we're following how Allah 
told us in the Quran because the Quran is the speech of who? of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala good so the third thing that we have to know is we have to know then we have to know Islam we have to know the religion of Islam we have to know how to practice and we have to know it with the evidence that's why you guys are memorizing the Quran because when you memorize the Quran you're learning what's called in Arabic it's called Dalil or in the plural it's called Adilla you guys are learning the evidence for how to practice your religion so if someone says to you you know how do I you know why why do I have to pray you can say from the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran وَأَقِيمُ uh, salat." Allah orders us to pray in the Quran so then you know if they ask you why do I have to fast you can say Allah says in the Quran كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ سِيَامْ كَمَا كُتِبَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ That Allah says in the Qur'an that fasting is prescribed for you just like it was prescribed for the people before you. You know all of this from the evidence from the Qur'an. And you know all of this from the evidence of the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. Where do we find the sunnah? How can we know the sunnah? Where can we find it? Yes, from the Prophet ﷺ. And we find it in his in the Hadith books. In the books like Bukhari and Muslim uh, and uh, Muslim Imam Ahmed, um, uh, Sunan Abi Dawood, Sunan Tirmidhi, Ibn Majah. These are all collections of Hadith. They're col- uh-huh. uh, Arba'in and Nawawi. Yes, those are Hadith. Well, all of those that they are hadith and hadith are the statements of the Prophet ﷺ. they're what he said they're also what he did his actions and they are also the things that the um, that he accepted that he said was okay to do for example one of his sahaba Khalid ibn Walid radiallahu ta'ala anhu he was eating they, they had uh, like a a lunch or a dinner, you could say. He had the Prophet ﷺ over, and he had dhub. Dhub is a big lizard. He put the lizard on the table. And the Prophet ﷺ didn't want to eat that lizard. The Prophet ﷺ said, this is not from my people's uh, tradition. لَيْسَ مِنْ أَرْضِ قَوْمِ وَكَمَا قَالَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ He said, this isn't something that we eat. You know, I don't know this food, I don't eat this. But he didn't say it was haram. So then, he, he allowed that food to be eaten. He didn't say that that food is haram. So that means that that's from his sunnah because he agreed. He said it was okay even if he didn't do it. So we say that that is also from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So it's the things he says. It's the things that he does, his actions. It is uh, the things that he agreed and allowed to happen in his presence that he didn't say was bad. And also the sunnah is how the Prophet ﷺ dressed and his manners and how he acted. So that's why you have to have good manners. Good manners is the sunnah of who? Of the Prophet ﷺ. If you want to have good manners, that means you're following the Prophet ﷺ. His manners were the best manners. Somebody asked Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala anha, the, one of the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, they asked her, what, is, uh, what was the, the uh, manners of the Prophet Muhammad And she said, عنها, that his manners is the Qur'an. It's like he's a walking Qur'an. Why? Because the Qur'an teaches good stuff. It teaches you to, make, to fast. It teaches you to pray. It teaches you that you supplicate only to Allah. That you pray only to Allah. It teaches you to be good to your parents. To listen to your mother when she tells you to do something. When your mom says something, you have to do it. And if your mom needs help, you have to do it. This helps you. This is good for your heart. That you say good words to your mom. And that you treat each other good. And you treat other people good. Other Muslims and non-Muslims, you're nice to them. 
That's what the Quran teaches you. And those are the manners in the Quran. So that is, that is part of the Sunnah of the Prophet And that is what Islam teaches us. The Prophet said, مَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ أَثْقَلُ فِي مَيْزَانَ مُؤْمِنْ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَ مِنْ حُسْنَ وَخُلْقِ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبْغِذُ وَفَائِشَ الْبَدِينَ The Prophet said that there isn't a thing on the Day of Judgment which is more important or weighs heavier on the scale of a believer. It's like a scale. You know what a scale is? A scale is, uh, is something you weigh yourself. Rashad, you understand what a scale is? What do you use a scale for? Ah, so we've got to listen. A scale, we weigh yourself. When you stand on a scale, you do it so you can weigh yourself. Or when you go to the airport and you have a big heavy bag, you put it on the scale, they weigh it. They say, oh, this is 20 kilos. Okay? Yes, and you weigh your fruits and, the, and, the, and vegetables when you go to the store. On the day of judgment, Yom Kiyama, there's a scale as well. And it's going to weigh your good deeds and your bad deeds. Okay, there's a scale that's going to weigh your good deeds and your bad deeds. And the scale of the believer, if they do good deeds and they have good manners, that's going to be one of the heaviest things on the scale. Of course, Tawheed, that you have correct belief, is heavier. But one of the heaviest things is, as the Prophet ﷺ said, is that you have good manners. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, and Allah hates people who have bad speech. So if you curse, you curse people, you slander people, you lie about people. Remember you told me the hadith about Namima? If you lie and carry tales or stories about other people and you tell other people, Allah hates that. And worship is everything that Allah loves and is pleased with. So we want to do those things that, are, that please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everything Allah hates is something that is a sin. Allah hates sinful things. If Allah doesn't like something, like Allah hates shirk. Verily, Allah um, doesn't forgive uh, uh, that you do shirk. So if you pray to other than Allah, if you pray with a partner, with Allah, you pray, you say, Oh, uh, I'm going to pray to this person so that they can carry my dua to Allah. No, that's haram. And that's shirk. And Allah hates that. Because some people, they do. They pray to dead people. Can a dead person help you? No, he can't help you. That's even the logic. You guys are young kids. You know that a dead person can't help you. You're not going to go to a grave. What if we go outside and we see a dead cat? Are you going to ask that cat? Are you going to say, Here, kitty, 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 and it's smashed by a car? Are you going to say that? Say, Kitty, 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 come here? No. Why? Because it's dead and it can't hear you. Okay? So some people, they believe to pray to dead people. Or they pray even to the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. They pray to Jesus Wasallam. They pray to Moses. They pray to Abraham. They pray to Jibreel. They can't do that. That's haram. Because Allah says that in the Quran, He says that فَإِنَّ uh, الْمَحْرِ فَإِنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ Huh? What's the ayat? You know the ayat? مَا اللَّهِ أَحَدًا نَعْمْ فَإِنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُ مَا اللَّهِ أَحَدًا Allah says this. You know what this means? Huh? نَعْمْ Good. So that verse, now we're going to know the meaning of that verse. That verse means that the masajid, and the masajid means any place you pray, even this room, even if you're in the dirt, as long as it's a clean place, that any place uh, uh, that the masajid are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that you should not associate, you should not make dua, you should not supplicate, you should not pray to anyone uh, besides Allah. So that means you can never pray to anyone, somebody dead, somebody alive, even somebody you love them, you can't pray to them. Only pray to Allah. And no one is a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship. And so that's very important for us to know. So those are the, uh, the things that we need to know as far as knowledge. And then the next time we'll talk about some of the other things that the Shaykh was saying. And I ask Allah the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our good and forgive us, forgive our evil. And bless us with ikhlas, with the bat, ala kitab, wa sunnah, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.